Hi there and welcome back to the Personal Brand and Business Show. My name is Bob Gentle and every week I speak to incredible people who share their secrets to building, marketing and monetizing your expertise and intentionally growing a personal brand and the mindset you need for your business to grow and thrive. If you're new, then wherever you have, whichever device you're using to watch or to listen, take a second to subscribe and that way you won't miss a single thing. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, hi, do subscribe. It really, really, really makes my day because at the moment I notice every single subscriber um, and they're few and far between. So you can really make a guy happy. This week, I'm really excited to welcome back Jan Koch to the show. Jan is probably the first person who's been back for a third visit. I don't think that's happened before. So Jan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. That's an honor. I, was, I had no idea. So we're probably going to have the most relevant and timely conversation I've ever had with anyone on the podcast because the whole world is freaking out. Um, usually I have a bit of a prepared um, way of making a guest look good at this point. But all I can really say about Jan is he's always at the front. He's always first. He always kind of knows what's going on. And today we're going to be speaking about AI and the content creator. There is so much to talk about here. I think there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety around the world about what this is going to mean for a lot of different people. But today I really want to focus on the benefits and how we can get in front of this a little bit, Jan. So for the listener, Jan, maybe if you start just by giving a little orientation about who you are, where you are, the kind of work you do, and then we can just roll from there. 100%. So I run K Consult. I'm located in Germany. I've been doing business for myself since 2013. So I've been around the blog a couple of times. And since 2019, early 2020, I've been playing around with AI tools, all under the umbrella of email marketing, virtual events and stuff like that. But with everything that has been going on, I decided to make consulting and training around AI marketing processes, AI content production, and just the, the, the thought patterns you need to leverage AI to your uh, benefits, my full-time focus, because if you don't use it, you'll be left behind. Like competitors will run circles around you in six months from now. And I've seen the responses with the people I work with and the companies I work with. They are all blown away when they first see ChatGPT and then they realize, damn it, I could really use this, even though it's not perfect and we'll talk about that. But there's, I think the biggest shift in society and business coming our way that we've ever seen certainly that i've ever seen in my 33 years on this planet so i have a client who's a nasa engineer and this isn't to panic anyone he's a former nasa uh, tech and he has like he has he's a friend who works at microsoft very senior and he was telling me the kind of conversations that they're having senior places like microsoft is they're not looking at the comparison of the the sort of water-powered mills versus coal-powered mills. This is really like the difference between um, before fire and after fire. Yeah. Um, there are huge, huge changes coming. And you're right, it does require us to survive or thrive and thrive or, or be left behind. Um, I think the professional of the future for them to succeed is going to require an element of becoming the AI whisperer. Yeah, It's a tool you're going to need to be able to leverage. The same as um, if you're an electrician at the moment, you're going to need to know how a screwdriver works. Um, but And you'll have a job far longer than copywriters. <laughs> well, yes, you, AI can't yet rewire your house, but um, it could probably... No, let's not go there. Um, <laughs> So there are two ways to look at AI. You can look at AI as, as, a, as a threat, or you can look at it as another thing to worry about, or you can look at it as a potential leverage. Um, yeah. So I guess the easiest place to start this conversation is what's your AI journey been? And then maybe people people can start looking at some parallels and maybe we can start borrowing into some particular use cases. 
Yeah, that's a great starting point. And let me preface that with one number, and that's 300 million. According to research from Goldman Sachs and other big players, that's the number of jobs that will at least see a 50% reduction in workload from AI. So AI will take 50% of your work. And my personal journey was that I happened to be friends with the founding team of Jasper, or at least somewhat related. And I was one of the first, I think, 100 or 150 people. They onboarded into a private beta version. And that was, I think, December 2019, something like that. I, w I started playing around with that beta version. Back then, you could write headlines. And I think one paragraph or one sentence, you could rewrite stuff. And I saw that given that I'm German, I'm not a native English speaker, this is a major help to elevate my copywriting skills. Of course, I, I had to also learn to, to identify good copy and to separate it from bad copy and cheesy copy and things like that. But that's a tool. That's what a tool requires you to do. You need to learn how to use a screwdriver. You need to learn how to drive a car. You don't need to understand how the car functions but you need to know how to operate it. And with AI, I think it's the same thing. And since then, over the last three years, I've written a book with AI. I write pretty much every single email with AI. I write cold outreach messages with AI. Right now, I've just, just before this recording, I've rewritten my about page on the website with AI. Even though that's about me, I use AI to create the framework and get like 80% of the content. And then I fill in my personal stories and my, my credentials and testimonials and stuff like that. And I think that is how you have to see AI if you want to stay relevant, because you are able to put out so much more content and more doesn't always equal better, but more allows you to test more. You see what resonates, you see what doesn't get traction. And by having more data, you make better decisions. You, you just stay more relevant if you have more data. I think one of the things that I see you doing really, really well is you're visible. You're very, very visible. And I think I'm certainly not aware that it's AI that's participating in that process at all. Well, I know that it is, but what I like about the way that you're using it is you're using AI to express yourself, not to excuse yourself. That AI is part of a process, but it's not the process. It's a little bit like, I use the analogy sometimes of Michelangelo when he's doing his sculptures. He's not chipping out all the raw forms. He has a team of apprentices to do that. Um, the reason these old masters could produce the volume of work that they did was because they were brought in to do the master strokes. They weren't brought in to do all the heavy lifting. They set the direction. And this is really where the prompting comes in. Um, and maybe we can talk about prompt design in a minute, because I think that's really a key for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and then they come in and they do the master strokes, like you were describing with really making it your own. Because when you put out content, it's clearly you. Um, and I think the important question really is, how do we use AI as a, as a, as a force multiplier for self-expression, not as an excuse or a delegation? Yeah, and that is the, the single biggest objection I hear all the time is you lose your tone of voice, um, doesn't sound like me, it's way too American. I work with a lot of, entrep of entrepreneurs in Germany and Europe and stuff, and they always say, oh, that's too bold. That's what an American would say and blah, blah, blah. But what they don't realize is you can tell, let's say, GPT-4 or Notion AI how they should sound. And that's what prompt engineering is. That's a skill that I think everybody who at least runs a business or does marketing needs to learn, but also equally... My daughter is three right now. She will learn how to use AI when she goes to school because there's no point anymore 
in writing exams yourself in my in, from my perspective you have to understand what the topic is about you have to be able to draw conclusions and critical thinking emotional intelligence those things will be very very critical and that they also go into prompt engineering but the writing itself is a commodity these days and when it comes to prompt engineering i think there are various ways that you need to think about it one is you have to have a set of voice and style guides and chances are you already have that in your business because you have a corporate identity you know how you want to speak with customers you know how you want people to to see you are you empathetic are you driven are you understanding are you aggressive because you're always at the forefront are you daring are you introverted are you extroverted adjectives so when it comes to prompt engineering you can tell gpt4 inject empathy into the next statement or rewrite this with a more daring perspective rewrite this for my audience of ceos and small businesses that do 20 million or more in revenue so the the number one thing i would say for prompt engineering is knowing what the outcome should be should it be a empathetic post should it be a controversial piece should it be bland bland and just uh go nicely with the flow on social media if you don't have that you won't have good output i think the most powerful because i haven't played too deeply with chat prompt design um because i know you can get really quite intricate with it yeah but i had a i have a client who they're in california they do smart homes really expensive smart homes and we asked chat gpt and this is the basic version to write a 1500 word blog post about the sonos home entertainment system uh, with an emphasis for outdoor use cases in california now if I had attempted as a copywriter who didn't really know what he was doing to bypass doing research and just pray that ChatGPT got this right and I gave it to a client, um, I'd be taking a huge gamble. But the client, because I was doing this with the client to show them what ChatGPT could do them for, for, as a leverage tool, um, he said that ChatGPT got the post absolutely perfect, even yeah. with its product choice. Um, and I think this, even a simple prompting like that can be really, really powerful when you understand just the basics. Um, why am I talking about this? Because I want people to understand how simple it can be. Um, but I'm curious because I think for me, this is the next place to go is how do you manage more complex prompting? Because you can't be building up that kind of complex prompting every time you want to create a piece of content. Right. You have to have a, a method for repurposing the prompts instead yeah. of, as we would do at the moment, repurposing content. Yeah. So I like to use the analogy of the corporate identity here again, because what 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 is it that big companies have? They have this brochure. This is how you use the logo. These are the files, uh, the, the fonts we use, colors we use, and all that stuff. You could create something similar. You can create for your company a set of two or three voice styles that you always revert to. Let's say a voice style for social media, a voice style for email on, and on the blog. And chances are you would find that you end up with one because you want to be uh, talking with the same voice all the time. You want, you want to have a consistent messaging go out. And then what really takes gpt4 to the next level and to to just stick with that platform there are tons of others you need to think about them as a virtual assistant almost they are a co-worker so what i like to do is um with the example of my about page for for the agency i took a bio that i had written for myself like two years ago put that in as in quotation mark old bio and I asked GPT-4, rewrite the old bio given above following the style guide XYZ, make it more about 
AI marketing consultancy and a few other things. Gave it the ideal target audience that I want to have with my agency, injected a few adjectives on empathy and being perceived as driven and authoritative, blah, blah, blah. And then there, there develops a back and forth because then GPT-4 comes out with, with a super long, I think it was like 400 word about page copy. And I told her, whoa, <laughs> that's actually, let me read this to you. Um, my response to that first one, because it was way overboard with storytelling, I told her to use storytelling and analogies and metaphors and stuff to make things easy to understand. And it was way too visual. <laughs> um, and then I, I just responded to GPT-4. Wow, you've gone a bit overboard with adjectives and storytelling. Can you tone it down to a bit as the target audience are CEOs and marketers who are used to marketing speak and respond best when they get clear benefits and advantages? That was literally my next prompt. Mm. And then it gave me a toned down version. And this, this is um, way better because I now got bullet item lists. I got uh, headlines the entire copy was way easier to skim through. And then the next prompt was, now this is fantastic. Rewrite the company bio to be perceived like one of the leading consultants who can charge five figures, six figures for his services, but don't put the price range into the bio. And now I have a personal bio, not the agency perspective, but for my personal brand that I could use as well. And this is how cop how really good AI output develops is there's a play, there's a back and forth, just as there would be with a copywriter that you're working with. You would rarely accept the first draft of a copywriter. There's also feedback going into the human collaboration. It's the exact same thing with GPT-4. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think one of the things that it's very easy to misunderstand is that you type in a prompt, you get your result, and we're finished this sort of sculpting the content back and with, with the back and forth, the chat, it's the chat version of chat GPT is, is where the magic happens. Yeah. And I think these prompts, I think there's maybe a misunderstanding that you need to design all of the prompt at the front end when actually it's a more of a test and adjust as you go um, in order to get the final result that you want. Everybody communicates differently. Just as you probably communicate differently with the team than I would, just because of cultural differences, for example. And I see so many marketers promote, oh, I have a database of 200 ready to use prompts for chat GPT, and I have a thousand. And it's almost like this, you know, the, this craze of listicle articles a couple of years back, 500 of the best entrepreneur podcast, 300 best quotes. What do you do with that much information? The, yeah. it's not usable rather give yourself a day or two sign up for the paid version of gpt4 it's 20 bucks a month it won't break the bank give yourself a day to play around and see okay i want to write a linkedin post and just try to write a linkedin post and soon enough you'll see hey this gives me output i like this gives me output i didn't like so let me make a copy of that prompt and the good thing with gpt4 is you can always revisit what you gave as a prompt it doesn't delete the prompt so you can always go back and see hey this got me fantastic outcome let me try this again but with a different tweak but the the problem is you'll soon lose yourself in the content and that's why one side of my services right now is teaching people how to use this and especially marketers and people who lead marketing teams how to incorporate ai but then the second pillar of my services is a customer journey exercise because you have to be able to not lose yourself in the mass of content. You could create like 100 posts on a day easily, but what are you going to do with that? You're talking about 100 awareness posts, then you don't have conversion-related content. So you are, have a huge top of the funnel and then there's nothing to follow up with that actually brings the money in. This is really, really important because I was speaking to a client earlier today, and this is, this is something that I hear all the time is, Bob, I don't know how you find the time to create the content. And the truth is most entrepreneurs at the moment are lucky if they manage a couple of social media posts a week. So really at that level, 
social media strategy is almost irrelevant. Yeah. Um, but when volume is no longer a problem, strategy becomes really important because the content needs to be directed by strategy. It needs to be directed by a goal. And you need to understand that customer journey. Otherwise, you've just turned up the noise. And this is the mistake that I see happening all the time at the moment. Um, you'll remember how places like Twitter were really damaged when automated scheduling posts came along <laughs> yeah. and curated content. Suddenly, Twitter was just full of garbage. And what chat GPT and similar tools do allow is for you to really turn up the volume on what I'm, I'm sorry, but I can only call shit posting. And the, the magic can really happen. Like you said, when this is directed by strategies, directed by goals, but it's directed by the outcome that you want to see. So let's not dwell too much on, on that side of things, because that's probably a whole nother conversation, but it's an important conversation. I think something I do want to ask you about is I'm using the free version of chat GPT. What would, how would my experience be different on the paid version? I think this is probably something a lot of people are probably wondering right now. I have only very little experience with the free version, to be honest. I don't even know if the free version gives you a GPT-4. No. Probably it would be very marginal improvement if you just do the regular posting on LinkedIn and social media and stuff. Where the power of GPT-4 comes in is when you think beyond social media, what you can do with GPT-4 is map out workshops, plan webinars, script videos, analyze images you can have image input and gpt4 tells you what's on the image and use that as a prompt i write cold outreach emails in gpt4 so i can personalize them to the industry uh, a couple of weeks ago i gave an email marketing workshop for a tourism office here i have no background in tourism marketing who am i to tell them what makes a good tourism marketing campaign i can tell you about what goes into general email marketing how you get people to click and to open and stuff like that but giving examples in this context is really really important examples that resonated with my client who am I to give them examples from a tourism marketing campaign? I've never done a tourism marketing campaign, but GPT-4 helped me with that. And they were blown away with those examples. And this is, I think, a very important point to understand is it's all great and GPT-4 passes law exams and medical exams and gets you potentially a master's degree at some university but if you cannot qualify the output based on your experience and if you cannot make sense of the output in the context that adds value to your customers as you said you're turning up the noise and you you are not adding value you'll be out of business before you can say gpt4 but if you understand how to put that into a service that actually benefits your customers the easiest one would be social media content services or seo services or something like that but the next level up is you are a consultant, you are an advisor. How can you use GPT-4 to enhance your consulting services? Suddenly you go from charging $1,000 a day to $3,000 a day because you can deliver much better services. That's the shift that I see coming. That makes a lot of sense. So I think let's look at it from the perspective of the personal brand, the expert, um, someone like you, someone like me, many of my listeners, they are individual entrepreneurs or executives who are really focused on building and marketing their personal brand. What should a general AI implementation look like for someone like me what sh how should my workflow be adapting um to integrate ai effectively as a, as a as an effective force multiplier i'll give you a few examples of places where ai makes sense in the process ideation is an obvious one when 
I, I had a call yesterday with a friend who I've shown GPT-4 for the first time, and she said every Sunday I'd spend three hours prepping the content for the next weeks, vetting through curated newsletters and picking topics and stuff. She'll be doing that in 30 minutes now with GPT-4. Ideation is really important. Um, content repurposing it's also a great one for example you and i both like video content what what i'm doing right now is i'm repurposing my videos i do the newsletter with it with the video breakdown too i've set up the video layout so that i can easily crop out a 9 by 16 vertical clip i have that transcribed with descript which all which also uses ai in the background and then i use gpt4 to create multiple posts for those little snippets so I can multiply the content very easily. Um, another one is responding to LinkedIn posts. If you don't have something to say to a certain post yourself, but you know this is a lead that you want to build a long-term relationship with, and so you need to be present, copy the LinkedIn post into GPT-4, ask it for a thoughtful response, put, some, um, put, put your voice guide to that so that it's in your tone of voice, and then you add, of course, your own thoughts and your own perspective based on what gpt4 created three very simple examples that's really smart i had never considered the last one um that's really really smart you can do the same with your own content too by the way just repurpose your own content mm -hmm. and you can have the you know these storytelling frameworks like ada attention interest desire action pas before and after um future and and past or present and past and things like that you can always create those formats of existing content and schedule it out in a couple of weeks so that you don't talk about the same topic every week but it's i think for content repurposing it's pretty bloody good i think another really good use case that i discovered just i think it was yesterday I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm finding ways to use ChatGPT in particular um, a lot, particularly around, like you said, the ideation. I think that the challenge for somebody like you and me is if somebody asks us a question, we can be helpful with a response. But sometimes those responses need a bit of analysis. They need some brainstorming. You need to go in and check some data. And... I got a really simple question on Instagram yesterday from a lady who runs a, a children's daycare business. She's never going to be a client for me. But I thought, you know what, I'd like to answer this question because I see a need, I want to fill that need. But I can't go away and spend hours on this. So I asked Chief Chat GPT, give me a simple marketing strategy for a UK-based daycare business. Now, it gave me some stuff. It wasn't entirely right. I chopped some bullet points out. I added a few more. And then I added a couple more bits, gave her back. And it took me five minutes. Yeah. But she had hours and hours of value that she wouldn't have got from anywhere else. Now that's not going to be forgotten. Um, and, and there's a very important lesson in that. I'm glad you're bringing this example. Um, she could have asked GPT-4. Yeah. But she turned to you because she trusts you. And that is something I say all the time to people who have objections about that, that you'll lose trust with people. It's quite the opposite. This human-to-human -human connection, I think, will be very, very important in the future. Just being able to have a call with somebody and maybe even meet in person at times because soon we'll be on a call and it will be two virtual avatars of us talking with each other. But the human trust will become more important i think as gpt4 and other tools arise because everybody will soon know that everybody can create any type of content and there's no reliable way as least i'm aware of that detects ai content from human content i i've seen a there are these ai detectors that claim to be able to do that but I've put in 200 words from GPT-4, changed one line, and it said 90% human content. So it's it's not reliable. And I, I hear all the time that SEO will uh, punish AI-generated content and stuff. And what I think happening, and I saw Neil Patel talk about this too, is it's not that the content doesn't rank because it's AI generated, it's because it's bad content. Yeah. Because if you don't inject personality and experience and knowledge into it, 
It's just general blah, blah and noise. I think, and for my audience, I think this is the most important point that any tribe, I mean, we're hardwired as individuals to pay attention to people. Yeah. Um, we're hardwired to filter out noise. That's just how we're built. So the person who can more frequently be visible, more frequently communicate, more frequently give value is the person who's going to generate the like, the know, the trust and the tribe around them. Yeah. And this is what AI allows people like you and I to do. We can be more frequently visible. We can be more impactful. We can be of better service. Um, and I think what we're also going to see is a lot of people trying to use AI as an excuse not to do those things. Those are the two directions I see people going. Yeah. And um, then I, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And I think you've seen, if I remember correctly, you've seen it on Twitter yesterday. I shared a tweet from Christian Savage, uh, who's, who shared that Arnold Schwarzenegger turned his newsletter into an audio podcast and he trained an AI to use his voice. Is that good use of AI? Is that bad use of AI? What do you think about that? Here's the thing. If... If I met someone in the street and told them, hey, you can do this, they could probably create a podcast using AI, never invest of themselves, other than maybe creating a few prompts to create content to have recorded and voiced by an AI in their voice, and it would fall flat on its face. Arnold Schwarzenegger has spent decades, a lifetime, building a personal brand. What people are interested in there is what does he have to say? What does he have to say? The fact that it's an AI voice that sounds a bit like him voicing it, who cares? It could have been a cartoon Arnold Schwarzenegger with somebody else doing his voice. We'd still it be paying attention. percent his voice. You wouldn't um, be able to tell the difference. Yeah. And honestly, if I read most business audiobooks, they've, em they've employed a voice actor to do the reading for them. How different is that? I mean, it's, it's innovative. And it's what he thinks this is the thing this is thought leadership he is leading with his thinking the fact that he's um found a little bit of leverage to have an ai read it for him is irrelevant it's very likely he's working with a copywriter just giving them prompts and saying copywriter here's what i think about this go and write something yeah that's how i imagine it goes but because he's invested in his personal brand he can make it work yeah, I love this analogy of yours because it's I I one hundred percent concur with that. It is a tool. Human copywriters are tools. Ghostwriters for books are tools in the in the purest sense. I'm not trying to play down on anybody doing those professions, but I was a web, a web developer. I am a tool for an agency to build a web a web presence. AI is just that, and it amplifies what we can do and. I had a conversation with my father the other day. He's retiring from his job in the financial administration in Germany this year. And I told him, be glad that you're retiring because in five years, AI has eaten your job for lunch. No, that can't happen. And there's so many intricacies and blah, blah, blah. And I told him, no, it's data. It's numbers and numbers and clear laws that can be analyzed. PricewaterhouseCoopers gave AI chatbots to all their lawyers and made it mandatory to use them so that AI analyzes contracts and the lawyers only analyze the results that AI gives them. It's ridiculous when you think about that. Well, what they want is better value for money internally. Yeah. They want, they want their best people to only be doing the things that only they can do. Um, and I think this is, I mean, my whole role, a lot of the time with clients is helping them isolate the things that only they should be doing in order that they can delegate the rest. Um, and sometimes it's sort of identifying the strategy, but a lot of the heavy lifting in any business, and that's absolutely the case in finance can be done by AI. But what can't necessarily be done is taking responsibility. But it doesn't need as many people to take responsibility for everything when you're simply judging what somebody else has already done. 
Um, that's very interesting. So if somebody's thinking, okay, I need to maybe get a little bit serious about AI now. Obviously we've spoken about ChatGPT, we've mentioned Jasper. That's really focusing on text to an extent or with ChatGPT is a little bit more dynamic. You mentioned Descript for video and audio. Are there any other tools that you're looking at at the moment you're thinking this is going to have a big impact, if not now, very soon? Synthesia.io is ridiculous. It's AI, or it's text to video with, you can upload your own images or video content of yourself, create a virtual avatar, and you essentially don't have to ever record a video in front of a camera again, and nobody will be able to tell the difference. It has been used on TV since 2018. Really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that part. With, with, with Reuters, I think. They, they gave it a try for, for an AI sports reporter in 2018. Um, I, I would say take a step back, though. Don't, don't jump into any tool. As, as we've spoken about earlier, think about what you want to accomplish first. Because it's so easy to lose yourself in GPT-4 to stay with this example or to, with Descript, with overdub features. You can create any audio content you want. You can create any video content you want. You can have AI analyze PDFs and summarize large research papers, for example, for you. But what is it that ends up on the other side as a result what business outcome are you looking to get with ai do you want to improve awareness build a bigger brand do you want to have more conversions do you need to multiply the output of your content team do you need to retain more customers think about that first think about the touch points you have with your audience to get to that goal and based on those touch points decide on what tool you want to use so one of the things that I know you're launching is some kind of readiness assessment. Yeah. Um, what kind of things is that looking at in a business? It is um, a quiz that you can take on my website, kconsult.services, and it will go through various stages. How much experience do you have with AI? How much time do you have to devote to learning AI? And questions like that to give you starting points of, hey, you should look at prompt engineering. Hey, you should just get your hands dirty and, and sign up for free GPT. Hey, you, you are as good as you can be. Good luck and, and take over the world. And essentially, this is uh, tackling or my try of tackling this, this problem where you are a busy business owner or a team lead, you don't have time to play around with GPT to stay on top of all the AI news. I can't even do that. And it's my full time gig right now. I, I send this curated newsletter every week. And I have signed up to I think 15 or 20 different newsletters to stay on top of things. And then of course, researching on myself, but it's impossible to keep track my database of topics I want to talk about is 150 pieces within two weeks. <laughs> nobody would read their newsletter <laughs> yeah i think this is the thing this this is what people need to understand is how quickly the world is moving yeah um we have general it, artificial intelligence now or almost so yeah. researchers have found in gpt4 what they call sparks of artificial general intelligence meaning gpt4 gives you context information you didn't ask for uh it's one step closer to Skynet if you want to put up the tinfoil head. Oh, let's not go there. <laughs> AI is becoming useful in so many places that I certainly wouldn't have expected it. I mean, this call, I have a plug-in for Zoom now, which is going to record the call, transcribe the call, and then it's going to give me an AI summary. Uh, my podcast editor is starting using a tool which scans a podcast recording, will suggest titles, will pull out quotes, will give me... A social media copy will write a blog post it just does so much um it's becoming very very prevalent in all areas of the content creation um, and administration more importantly space that we really can't afford to not be using it i'm finding it incredibly useful in my ability to add value to my clients um and i think at the end of the day that's what we're all here for is 
to be able to be visible and to be able to add value. And this gives us tremendous benefit on both sides. Jan, if people want to connect with you, if they want to go deeper with you, how can they do that? What's your favorite place to hang out online? The favorite place online is LinkedIn right now because Twitter has become the new LinkedIn for cold DMs on my end. I get like oh. 20 spam cold DMs every day on Twitter. LinkedIn surprisingly quiet. I get completely the opposite. That's so strange. <laughs> And your website is kconsult.services. 100%, yeah. So one question I need to ask you before you go is the one question I ask every guest. What's one thing you do now that you wish you'd started five years ago? Using AI, but it didn't exist then. So <laughs> <laughs> one, one example to, to close this off. Um, I'm not a graphic designer. I don't have the budget to hire a graphic design team to do the rebranding. We, we chatted off camera and I rebranded from my personal brand to K-Consult. I have 1,927 graphic assets that have been generated by AI for $65. And a thousand of them are actually usable. Think uh, logos, icons, business cards, letterheads, presentation. There are like 15 PowerPoint presentation templates in there with a color scheme that matches and that flows nicely and stuff. So you really, there's very few things in, except for emotional labor that AI can't do these days. I have to ask what tool you used for that. That's brandmark.app. Writing that down. Jan Koch, from K Consult, thank you so much for your time. Uh, that does bring us to the end of another episode. Thank you to you at home for listening. Jan, thank you for joining me. And you at home, I would gently encourage you to leave a five-star review wherever you're listening. If you're watching, that means a thumbs up and a subscribe. Uh, and if you did enjoy this show, then you will love the Personal Brand Business Roadmap. It's 50 pages of everything you will need to start, scale, or just fix your expert business. Just Click the link in the show notes um, or visit amplifyme.agency forward slash roadmap. Thanks again for listening and for watching and see you next time.